Welcome to Brilliant Maths. Thanks for following me on this channel and don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Today we are continuing our lessons on geometry, angles formed by lines and transversals, and then we'll look at corresponding angles. But before we go there, let's look at the answers to the last exercise. I hope you were able to do it. Check it out. Number one. We're supposed to find the size of the max angles, giving a reason for each answer. The value of angle X is 108 degrees because they are vertically opposite. And the value of angle Y is 72 degrees, angles on a straight line. Number two, the value of angle P is 118 degrees. They are vertically opposite angles. And the value of angle Q is 62 degrees. Also, the reason is they are vertically opposite angles. Number three, the value of angle X is 87 degrees because it's a complete revolution. So 87 plus 145 plus 128 will give you 360 degrees. The value of angle Y is 49 degrees. They are vertically opposite angles. And the value of angle Z is 44 degrees because it's angle on a straight line with 136 degrees. Well done. Angles formed by lines and transversals. A transversal is a line which cuts across two or more lines. This is what we mean. We have two lines and the line that cuts across them is called a transversal. So this particular line, let's call it line PQ, transverses line AB and line CD. In this case, line AB and line CD are parallel lines. We could also have lines that are not parallel. For example, if we have line XY and line MN, and PQ is a transversal. What happens when you have angles formed by transversal cutting across parallel lines and angles formed by transversal cutting across lines that are not parallel? We'll find out soon. Identifying corresponding angles. A pair of angles are corresponding if they lie on the same side of the transversal and on the same side of the other lines. What exactly do we mean by that? We have line AB parallel to line CD. The arrow shows that the lines are parallel. And then line XY is a transversal. When XY transverses AB and CD, several angles are formed. We have angle L, angle M, N, O, P, Q, R, and S. We want to identify the corresponding angles among these ones. So we're saying that a pair of angles are corresponding if they lie on the same side. So we can say that L corresponds to M. They lie on the same side of the transversal, which is XL. And on the same side of line AB and line CD, as you can see, angle L is on the same side as M. They are both on the right side of the transversal. And they are both on top of the line. L is on top of AB and M is on top of CD. So. L corresponds to M. We can actually say angle L corresponds to angle M. Which other pair of corresponding angles can we see? Angle N also corresponds to angle O. Angle N corresponds to angle O. They lie on the same side of 
the transversal, and both of them are right beneath. Also, angle P corresponds to angle Q. Angle P corresponds to angle Q. And finally, angle R corresponds angle R corresponds to angle S. So we have four pairs of corresponding angles. Let's look at figure two. We have PQ as our transversal. And we have line EF and line GH as the other two lines. But in this case, EF and GH are not parallel. In fact, if we extend it a little bit, the two lines will intersect. So they are not parallel. But we have corresponding angles there too. They should lie on the same side of the transversal and on the same side of the other two lines. We can say U corresponds to K. They are on the same side of PQ to the right and on top of the lines. So angle U corresponds to angle K. Also, angle V corresponds to angle Y. Angle V corresponds to angle Y. Angle T corresponds to angle J. Angle T corresponds to angle J. And finally, angle W corresponds to angle Z. Angle W corresponds to angle Z. What more can we see from these two figures? Let's look at the shape that is formed when two angles are corresponding. We said U corresponds to K. So it gives us an S shape. If you look at it from H to this point and going up, the angles are here. It gives an F formation. But if you look at angle U and angle K, you can notice that they are not equal. But let's look at the set of corresponding angles in figure one, where the lines are parallel. A, B is parallel to C, D. Angle L corresponds to angle M. And because the lines are parallel, the angles are equal. But obviously, when the lines are not parallel, the corresponding angles are not equal. Also, looking for the F shape, angle P corresponds to angle Q. So, take a look at it. P, Q, and that's our F shape, angle P and angle Q. You can actually get an F formation for every set of corresponding angles. Let's just look out for them. PQ gives you that F shape. R corresponds to S. This time the F will be turned upside down. It starts from here, goes up all the way there and there. So that's what you have. The F formation for angle R and S being corresponding. You can do the same for L and M. It's also turned upside down. You have your F formation. It crosses there. For N and O, it's very visible. This is your F formation. 
for angle N corresponding to angle O. And as we can see, when the lines are parallel, the corresponding angles are equal. But when the lines are not parallel, this is very obvious. We're saying that U corresponds to K, and obviously U and K are not equal. V corresponds to Y. T corresponds to J. In this case, T is an acute angle from the drawing, and J is obviously an obtuse angle. So conclusively, we can say that when angles are formed by parallel lines, the corresponding angles are equal. But when we have a transversal cutting across two or more lines that are not parallel, the set of corresponding angles are not equal. Let's look at an example. Let's look at these two examples. Example one, we have line PQ and line ROS. And with the arrows, we know that they are parallel. So we're saying that line PQ is parallel to line RS. We have this angle to be equal to 72 degrees. And we're supposed to find the value of angle A and angle B. Let's look for the F formation. When are two angles said to be corresponding? We said that if they lie on the same side of the transversal and on the same side of the other two lines. So angle A and the angle that measures 72 degrees lie on the same side of the transversal. Let's call our transversal line X, Y. So line XY transverses line PQ and line RS. And angle A and angle 72 are on the same side. Also, angle A corresponds to angle 72. If we assume that this is the top of the transversal and this is at the bottom, both of them lie on the same position on the two different lines. And we can actually see the F formation. We can see the F formation. So angle A is corresponding to this angle. Therefore, it is equal to 72 degrees. The reason is corresponding, corresponding angles on parallel lines. Remember, we mentioned that corresponding angles are only equal if the lines that form them are parallel. So having found that Angle A corresponds to 72 degrees. What is the value of angle B? Angle B is also equal to 72 degrees. Why? Angle B is equal to 72 degrees because angle A and B are vertically opposite. And we said that vertically opposite angles are equal. B is equal to 72 degrees. The reason, vertically opposite angles. So angle A is vertically opposite to angle B, so they are equal. Let's look at example two. We have the diagram. We can see a triangle. Kind of. Triangle A, B, C, and triangle A, D, E. But let's forget about that. We're looking at lines and transversals. The parallel lines here are B, C, and D, E. A, B is a transversal. All you need to do is just extend the line a little bit. And then you can see 
that it transverses CB. And also, AC is a transversal. So if you extend the lines a bit, you can identify your corresponding angles. So if B, C, and D, E are parallel lines, then, and that line is a transversal, we can confidently say that angle X corresponds with 81 degrees. So they are equal. They are on the same side of the transversal, and they are in the same position. So X is equal to 81 degrees corresponding. Corresponding angles on parallel lines. When you get figures like this, what you need to do is extend the lines so you can identify the parallel lines, identify the transversals, and it will be easy for you to work out. Take a look at these two angles. Assuming this angle is 89 degrees, and the third one, the second angle is 98 degrees. What can you say about line RS and line PQ? If we look at them, TZ is a transversal. RS and PQ have formed angles with the transversal, and I can see the F formation. I can see the F formation telling me that these two angles are corresponding, but they are not equal. So what does that tell us about line RS and line PQ? Who can remember? It means that line RS and line PQ are not parallel. Having discussed all of this, Let's work out the next set of exercises. Having learned how to identify corresponding angles, try this out by yourself. Question one, state whether line AB is parallel to line YZ. That's line AB and that's line YZ. I know you can do this. Question two, find the value of angle X in this diagram. We have angle X there, that's 100 degrees and that's 88 degrees. It's very easy. Question three, we're also finding the value of angle X. That's the diagram we have for A. Find that angle. And that's the diagram for angle for B. Find the value of angle X. Don't forget to extend the lines. That will help you identify the transversals and the parallel lines. My name is Ngozi Orevogene. Thanks for watching this channel. Don't forget to subscribe and also give us a thumbs up for what we do here because I know you like it. Follow me also on brilliantmaths.com. It's a math blog. You will find lots of interesting work in maths that will help you excel. And always remember, maths is fun and you can do it. Catch you next time.